the Long Island Sound, a small yet important part of the North Atlantic Ocean. It lies south of Connecticut and north of Long Island, west of Block Island and east of New York City. It connects countless cities from around the area, from the home of Yale University to the city that never sleeps. It's a hybrid of freshwater and saltwater. Several Connecticut rivers and a few from New York empty out into the Long Island Sound, which also connects to the Atlantic Ocean. The Long Island Sound watershed connects to multiple cities, many of which were due to the extent of the Connecticut River. It's usually a calm body of water with not many big waves. It's a perfect beach spot to relax and leave your worries behind. If you pick the right day, you'll enjoy yourself under the warm sun and cool breeze, followed by a spectacular view of the Long Island Sound. I love that the Long Island Sound is shared by both New York and Connecticut. So it's property that is uh, recreational for both states. Amanda Mesick teaches marine biology at Valley Regional High School. It's unique because it's a habitat that's protected by two bodies of land, so the water is it's very protected, which is unique. The great history of the Long Island Sound dates back to several thousand years ago. Glacial Lake Connecticut was dammed by a terminal moraine that now forms the spine of Long Island and Fishers Island. Approximately 15,000 years ago, the moraine dam that impounded Lake Connecticut failed. Before the European colonization of the United States, about 10,000 to 15,000 Native Americans inhabited the Long Island Sound. But it wasn't until the year 1614 AD where the existence of the Long Island Sound had been recorded. Adrian Block, a 47-year-old Dutch navigator, had entered the Sound and made the first recording of the Long Island Sound. Ironically enough, the Sound was called the Devil's Belt in colonial times. And the reefs that run across the Sound were known as Devil's Stepping Stones from which Stepping Stone's lighthouse got its name. During the Industrial Revolution, the Long Island Sound had been utilized for manufacturing and production. It had been used for the production of textiles, metal finishing, fishing, and oyster harvesting. Ferries provide great transportation throughout the Long Island Sound. They're capable of carrying automobiles, trucks, buses, and foot passengers. The Long Island Sound also has a huge history in the fishing environment. Fishers collected lots of oysters, lobsters, scallops, blue crabs, tuna flounder, striped bass, and bluefish. Featured developments include underwater cables that were questionable but proved to be ecologically safe but although several bridges over the sound and a tunnel under the sound have been proposed, no crossings have been built since the Throgs Neck Bridge in the early 1960s. And in 1985, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled the Long Island Sound as the Juridical Bay. The Thimble Islands are located in the Brantford, Connecticut region of the Long Island Sound. Known to the Matapesic Indians as Katamquash, aka the Beautiful Sea Rocks. They consist of a total of 81 houses. Notable residents include cartoonist Gary Trudeau, journalist Jane Pauley, actor Frank Converse, and former U.S. President William Howard Taft.
the Long Island Sound is also home to some spectacular water creatures. Many underwater species thrive here in the beautiful waters. Sea life of the Long Island Sound is a true wonder. Amanda tells us that there were plenty of discoveries that were made here in the Long Island Sound. Sometimes there's things that come up into the Long Island Sound and make their way up through the water um, that are unusual. Um, for example, um, the lionfish was found in the Long Island Sound at one time. Um, so depending on the storms and the things that happen um, in the area, there are sometimes um, some things that boaters and fishermen will find. One of the unique things about the Long Island Sound is the marshes. They are some of the most productive biological systems in the world. They provide tall grass and other interesting plants for certain species to thrive in. The Long Island Sound is really a true wonder that's in its own biological landscape. But sadly, the Long Island Sound is in real danger. It's facing the threat so many other places are struggling from. Climate change, a man-made global disaster. Its effect on Long Island Sound, I think um, one of the biggest effects is the sea level rising. As fossil fuels and tree cutting keep the temperature rising, the glaciers are melting. This causes a rise of sea level, which comes with the risks of frequent flooding. That leads to frequent evacuations and people having to move out of their homes. Even worse, it's damaging our ecosystems and rooting landscapes that are very important. Because sea level is rising, it's um, impacting some of the space that we have on the beaches. So our beaches are getting smaller and some of the shoreline property is getting um, less and smaller. As time went on, Connecticut has been getting flood after flood after flood, from high tides to the deadly Hurricane Sandy. This causes food shortages, power outages, and even fatalities. Dozens of people have died from these floods. And flooding isn't the only problem coming from climate change. The heat is rising all over the globe. The endangerment and extinction of several species shortages of food we consume on a daily basis, more frequent and severe storms and wildfires, and even oceans becoming hotter and more acidic. This is all because of us humans, contributing to damage our environment with our littering our use of fossil fuels, our habit of killing animals and cutting down trees for the sake of our industry, and certain people being greedy with the way they control our lifestyle. It's only getting worse, and we are getting to a point where it may be irreversible. So climate change has a lot of impacts on um, the, the wildlife, especially the fish and the shellfish that are in the ocean. Um, we talk about ocean acidification and that can have a big impact on the shellfish, which is a big industry for Long Island Sound. Ocean acidification is making the number of shellfish dwindle. They are an endangered species now thanks to climate change. This is why we need to do something about it. We need to change our ways. Millions of people all over the world are advocating for the end of climate change. They fight against the destruction of our plants and the usage of fossil fuels. 
They are the example of what humanity should be. They understand what needs to be done. They want a better future. They know they have to get this done so future generations don't have to. They will either get the wish they so deserve or die trying. And new rules need to be put in place if we want to help the environment get better. We need to get it done as soon as possible or we may never recover. I think it's going to take a long time, but I think coming up with some rules and regulations to start with will at least get things moving in the right direction. Um, but anything that has taken this much time to, to happen is going to take just as much time or longer to reverse. Clean energy and solar power is a great alternative to fossil fuels. It's a great way to reduce our carbon footprint. Politicians have made many proposals to fight against climate change. They have donated billions to help reduce the worsening of climate change. And there are many organizations to help clean our planet. One of them is the Connecticut Resilience Program. So I think the Connecticut Resilience Program is about um, trying to get the area to bounce back from things a little bit faster than it has in the past. Um, so maybe storms and um, and human impact if we can speed things up a little bit so that we can make people more aware and kind of bounce back to where we were a little bit faster than we currently are. And we need to bounce back fast. The sooner we do, the better. Just think about it. Places like this marsh are in danger of becoming extinct. The rising sea levels and higher temperatures are getting closer and closer to killing these marshes. They are a very important piece of land, and if we don't act, all of these marshes could be gone. And Amanda agrees that this is a real emergency. She's got advice for all of you to take notes of. Stay updated with the news and the things that are happen, happening around you, current events in your area, um, whether you use the area to recreate or not. I think everybody just um, understanding the benefits and the impacts that humans have on, on the areas we're in. The Long Island Sound will forever be considered as a very important piece of land and a great example to our culture. But constant environmental damage continues to escalate and worsen. If things don't change, what the Long Island Sound would look like years from now will probably not be pleasant. What will happen to our beaches? What about the people living there? What about the sea life living in the Long Island Sound? Will they ever survive? Which species will become extinct? Will any sea life adjust to the rising temperatures? How much more pollution will our waters get? These are not pleasant questions, but we must try very hard so that they're never asked. We need to stop cutting down our trees, stop using fossil fuels, and stop polluting our oceans. The Long Island Sound is too valuable to be damaged. We need to keep fighting for the sake of our waters. We cannot let them worsen even more. Not one degree hotter, not one inch higher, and not one more piece of trash in the ocean. Just you can make a big difference. Only you can prevent this from ever worsening. It will take all of us to fight for our oceans and everywhere else that's affected by climate change. And it all starts with you. Recycle your plastic. Switch to clean energy. Help clean the environment. You are not alone. There are many like you, and you can work together. All we need is a little push, and that little push could change everything. <laughs>